She was an entrepreneur, philanthropist, and activist. Madam C.J. Walker turned a bad hair day into a fortune. She followed her dream, turning her life into a true rages to riches story. Driven by her own struggles with hair loss during 1890, she began experimenting with different hair care products and treatments. In 1910, in Indianapolis, she established the headquarters of Madam C.J. Walker Laboratories to manufacture cosmetics and train her sales agents. She mobilized a network of 20,000 African-American women as sales agents, factory, and office workers. Her sales agents earned between five to $15 a day when unskilled white laborers were earning $11 a week. She accrued an enormous personal wealth, provided economic opportunity for black women, and gave them an alternative from domestic labor. She believed that with wealth comes responsibility, and she became a role model for using her riches to support political and philanthropic causes. Born on December 23, 1867, on a plantation in Delta, Louisiana, as Sarah Breedlove, she went on to build a mansion near the estates of John D. Rockefeller and Jay Gould. Madam C.J. Walker worked incredibly hard, and the demand she placed on herself eventually undermined her health. On May 25, 1919, in her 34-room mansion, Villa Lawaro, she died. Madam Walker's death was news all over the world. The wealthiest Negro woman in the United States and perhaps the entire world. Gwendolyn Kazare Prasuti is a historical interpreter who is dedicated to studying the character, philosophy, courage, and grace that have helped black American women survive and flourish. Her program introduces untapped accessible history that celebrates the rich diversity, ambitions, and inspires heroism in the face of racism and violence. Madam C.J. Walker is one of her five women she portrays. Chicago Defender. Mm. You would like to hear what I think about the article in the New York Times, how they routinely use the term negress to refer to black women or refuse to capitalize the N in Negro? No. Oh, the villa, the villa that I built on the banks of the Hudson River. Yes, neighbors were worried. They did not mind that I was a successful businesswoman. They did not mind that I came from the South or that I had once been a washerwoman. They minded that I was a Negro invading the domains of New York's ruling elite. You're looking for more? <laughs> I have a few minutes to spare. In an hour or so, I will need to be at the National Negro Business League Convention. A long time has passed since that day in December 1867 when I took my first breath in Delta, Louisiana. One of six children born to Minerva and Owen Breedlove. They named me Sarah. As a young child, I worked beside my parents on the same cotton plantation fields where they were once enslaved. When I was seven and nine, my parents died. I had no choice but to live with my sister and my brother-in-law. He was cruel, took me out of school, and made me work. What did I do? What could I do? I married at 14 to Moses McWilliams. I thought he would take me out of the promised land. 
but he died too soon. By 20, a widow with a young child, unable to support daughter or myself, I joined my brother Alexander in St. Louis, Missouri. I worked as a laundress, earning a dollar a week. My hands scrubbed, stirred, and beat clothes in wooden wash tubs and iron pots of boiling water, lye soap irritating in my hands and arms. Nevertheless, I always wore freshly laundered, starched, and pressed clothes to highlight my skills. I took pride in my work, often ironing late into the night to meet Saturday's delivery deadline. Sunday mornings, I embraced the power of prayer. Now, I did not pray for a lighter load, but for a stronger back. I promoted my business, but from the neck up, I was on the verge of becoming entirely bald. My hair rebelled, my scalp always itching, felt as if cinch bugs were crawling beneath my scalp. Then Alexander died. Grieved, confused, I drifted into a relationship with John Davis, of course. He did not deliver on any of my expectations. He was afflicted with SWD, shirker, womanizer, drunk. He left, and I started seeing Charles Joseph Walker. He was a newspaper man with a proper education and with the right amount of ambition to match my own. Yes, 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 I had my epiphany. One morning, I was at the washtops, <laughs> looking at my arms buried in soap duds. I asked myself, what are you going to do when you grow old and your back gets stiff? Well, I heard of Annie Malone and her hair grower. It was different from the goose fat, bacon fat, and chicken fat some women used to manage their heads. That concoction did a lot of damage. And after a day or so, you smell like fetid meat. Of course, that was not me. I tried her product. I tried her product and I registered as an agent for Annie Malone. Not too long after, I moved to Denver in 1905. I was not satisfied selling her product. I wanted my own business. I invested a dollar fifty to start care business. Changing my name to Madam C.J. Walker told my clients that I was no longer with Annie Malone. Then, in 1910, we moved to Indianapolis, Indiana established our headquarters, build a factory and a school, a beauty school, to train our sales agents. When we began to make $10 a day, C.J. Walker, my husband, thought that that was enough. He thought I ought to be satisfied. I was not. Now, he taught me a lot. He taught me a lot. But when we were unable to come to any type of agreement, I realized I needed him like a fish needs shoes. So I continued on. I expanded my market beyond the United States to Cuba, 
Jamaica, Panama, Haiti, and Costa Rica. I pledged a thousand dollars to a building fund for the construction of a YMCA. Oh, that felt good. A former laundress who earned a dollar a week, now earning enough money to help others and sharing my life story with women of color so that they too can help themselves to become economically independent. What is my secret to success? <laughs> I got my start by giving myself a start. There is no royal rose petal strewn path to success. And if there is, I have not found it. For whatever success I have attained has been the result of much hard work and many nights. <laughs> I did not sit down and wait for the opportunities to come. I got up and I made them for myself. Oh, speaking of getting up, it is time to go. I do not wish to be late. Come along, I'll drive.